Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Josh. And we're joining you for a special Friday competitive challenge. Now, we're not actually doing news, and we're not actually reviewing watches. Instead, we're playing a little bit of popcorn. Josh, what's the game? Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, watches that go with certain professions or occupations, right? Okay, yes. Absurd watches for absurd professions, sure. and some normal ones, too. Yeah. Okay, so Josh, tell me, right off the bat, the mm -hmm. most important thing in the world that I'm asked every single day is what would a Russian billionaire wear? That's right. Um, I would say it would have to be something made by either Breguet, Blancpain, or Elise Norden. Okay. Let's start there. We're, we're going to go ahead and, and, uh, Grant, and start there. It, it doesn't have to be something an actual Russian billionaire has been seen wearing. Yeah. Well, this is a conceptual exercise, a thought experiment, if okay. you will, folks. Well, then, then we're going to be going with something extremely, extremely expensive. So maybe Richard Mill would be a good place to start. Okay. Does it have to have a skull, and does it have to be gold? Uh, yes and no, I'd say. Okay, so I'm going to take my liberties there. I'm going to throw out the Richard Mill RM32 Diving Chronograph Annual Calendar Flyback. It's also a useful boat anchor for your yacht. That's right. Yeah, or, you know, if you have an enemy, you can strap it to his ankle when uh, you toss him off the ed edge of your yacht, and now he's not coming back up. And if you're in need of a tax shelter, it's big enough to have its own zip code. That's right, absolutely. We've had that watch here before, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I, I think it can also act as an artificial man-made island. That's right, I think we needed a crane to move that watch around. Yeah, it was effective landfill, doubled the size of the Miami shoreline. It did. So, so now if we don't go that direction, right. what other options are there for the Russian billionaire on the go? Remember, has to fit on a major, I would say, yacht, mm -hmm. uh, double-decker, mm -hmm. Tour bus, right. rock store style, sure. or and a private 747. Um, it has to fit on those. I mean, just I, I, I keep coming back to Lee Nardin because I, I all those the crazy exotica erotica watches. Okay. Those, that's what I keep seeing. I see like an eccentric Russian billionaire on a yacht full of people. Okay. We'll PJ, PG, uh, but he, he needs to be wearing a, a one of the erotica watches that chimes and also shows you know sexual content on the, oh, okay. on the dial. So basically, you can have a good time even if it has the wrong time. Exactly. And that's the point because there's never a wrong time to be a Russian billionaire. Exactly. So times are good. Otherwise, um, if you're not a Russian billionaire and you need to be more discreet but you've got the money to buy something nice, Josh, what about a doctor's watch? Mm, a doctor's watch. So it has to be functional, like a tool watch, right? Yes. Um, I would say, ooh. And if uh, you're an actual tool and a doctor like Dr. House, mm. does it still have to be a tool watch or do you have that covered personally? <laughs> uh, I would say that it still needs to be a tool watch. Then. Okay, for a tool. Right, exactly. So well, for Dr. House specifically, right? So um, actually, we just had one in here. It's... Uh, it's not very expensive in regards to a lot of the watches that we talk about. It would be the Lawn Jeans, I think it's the Heritage Pulsometer. Okay, that works. I yeah. can see that being a practical alternative to the Alango Unzona 1815 Boutique Edition, which also features a pulsometer. Here's mm -hmm. the thing about a doctor's watch. Yeah. It's like the old days when the rock star would drive the Cadillac and the doctor would drive the Buick, even though he had Cadillac money. Mm -hmm. You can't have it get out, unless you're a celebrity plastic surgeon, you can't have it get out as a doctor that you're making bank. So you've yep. got to drive a discreet luxury car and have a discreet luxury watch. Yeah. But for good measure, you want to have something that's at least vaguely useful so you can convince your significant other that this is a necessary <laughs> occupational expense yeah. and maybe write it off on your taxes. Yeah, I wonder if you could, if you, if you bought a pulsometer either from Long Jeans or Long & Son, uh, if you could write that off. And if you wanted to take a punt on an emerging collectible, PAM 80 Independent Deadbeat Second. Oh, yeah. 160 pieces, 2001. That Chazard movement is still sexy. Okay, Josh, Forest Ranger. Ooh, Forest Ranger. So it's got to be rough. It's got to be a watch that can take a, uh, a licking and keep ticking, right? California Forest Ranger. So you have to deal with water and heat because the world's on fire when you live in the California forest. What about something like this? Audemars Piguet Diver? It's a diver's watch, but it's sturdy. It's got a, a strong movement. It's got a rubber strap, tang buckle. If your wrist swells or shrinks, um, and you know, it just keeps good time. It's got date on it. Mm -hmm. That works. The watch can stand the heat, but I'm not sure the strap can. Let's yeah, say you, you go full right. bracelet. Yeah, this on a full bracelet, I think would work. Okay. Um, what about? Let me think here. Uh, something maybe with a moon phase because I feel like the the phases of the moon might uh, have something to do with animal behavior. Okay. okay. Cre creepy like like or something like that maybe? I don't know what that means but sure. 
I do. Yeah. <laughs> or you could go in a completely different direction. As we all know from American folklore, mountain men fight bears with their bare hands, Ooh, yeah. which is why a Rolex Deep Sea wrapped around the fist as a knuckle duster oh, would yeah. be the perfect way to show Smokey who's boss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'd say that would absolutely be the case. Then at that point, you could go towards... Um, or maybe that's the best possible use for a Zenith DeFi Extreme. Ooh, DeFi Extreme or any really U-boat. Watch. I would. Well, that's great because then it handles the bear and it also rids the world of one U-boat. That's right. So literally, that is a two-in-one um, uh, benefit. Yeah. By the way, we are selling U-boats, so I take it all back. Uh, okay. Great real quick. Um, hipster West Coast U.S. Ooh, West Coast hipster. So I'm guessing born into a rich family is rebelling. So it's got to be something small and vintage. Yeah, okay, and there we go. The smaller, the better. Please, <laughs> no larger than 33 millimeters, folks, hmm. people. Yeah, I mean, if, if it can barely be uh, called a watch, I think that's who that's that's the watch for the West Coast hipster. I, I think if you could, like, artificially age with, like, vinegar and tar, like hmm. a lady date just, that would be just about perfect. How about a bronze lady date just? If such a thing existed, it would be suitably ironic. Okay, hipster, okay. East Coast. Hmm. Maybe maybe West more Village, serious. New York City. I, I think you got to stick with vin vintage, right? With with a hipster, it has to be yes. vintage. So, but maybe something a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. um, maybe less fun because it's New York. A mega constellation on a strap, or something very thin and small uh, along those lines. What do you think? Or maybe just uh, an old date just on I, a strap. I, I would which say is respectable, honestly. East Coast hipster. It has to be small and it has to be weirdly non-round. So okay. I'm going to go with like an old square mito. That's, that's not, that sounds just about right. If it's the kind of thing an old man wearing plaid eating Werther's original would rock circa like 1940, I think you've Put got it on the wrist. ding. There East Coast go. hipster, ring the bell. We got that nailed. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Moving on. Okay. There are tough. There there are definitely some occupations where the exigencies of the moment okay. will alter your choice such that you might initially say, I'm buying this to be a professional watch and ultimately just go off on a ridiculous irrelevant tangent. So let's say a lawyer okay. who at first wants to bill hours and then in the end is like, oh, to hell with it. I just want to show the partner what's up. Hmm. Uh, I would say, how about a 41 millimeter uh, platinum president? That's a way, that's a middle finger to everyone around, but it's also not so flashy that every guy on the street's gonna know. Okay, well, what I'm gonna say is, in the law firm, there's like a passive aggressive thing going on. Everyone mm -hmm. hates everyone else, and everyone's competing to make special counsel, and then everyone's competing to make partner, and then amongst the partners, there's a scramble to be the alpha. Lots so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the watch that would satisfy any of those. Okay. Platinum Anniversary Daytona. Mm. Excessive at any pay grade. Total ego trip. And of course, because it's a chronograph, you can use it for billing hours, so it's justified. I, it makes a lot of sense. You could write it off. And you, you used to work in a law firm, yeah? I did. So it's small enough that when you're totally outclassed by someone who outranks you and you don't want to embarrass yourself, <laughs> you hide it under the sleeve. And then when you're around your peers and presumptive rivals, it comes back. <laughs> Boom. Look at that, you know? Okay. American politician, mm. um, circa 1960. Okay, a 1960s politician. Futurism um, is cool. Mm -hmm. The world is endlessly optimistic. The future is bright. Okay, so maybe a Rolex two-tone oyster quartz? Okay, a little too early. Sorry. Oyster quartz not coming into play till the 70s. <sighs> it's all right. It's all right. Try the it. spirit of the thing is correct. The mechanism is not. Mm -hmm. What do you think JFK would have worn if he didn't already have an Omega? Uh, if he didn't already have an Omega Speedmaster to the moon, is that what we're talking about? Well, it doesn't have to be an Omega. It could be. It could be anything else that's going on at the time. It could be a Rolex. Yeah. So I guess it would be a president because that's he is a president. It's president. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. The president's a bracelet. The day date's the president. Mm, the day date's the watch. I'm getting so creative here. I need to be more creative. Let me think. He's rich. He's rich. Mm -hmm. I, I'm drawing a blank. Why don't you hit me with it? Mm, I'm gonna say all things considered. Mm -hmm. An 18 karat Memovox, because oh. you, you got to remember when your wife's coming home. You in Maryland don't want to get caught. Memovox, the voice of memory, is relevant now as then. An 18 karat just to stick it to the peons. Hmm. You can be a man for the people and not of the people. Right, JFK? Okay, American politician circa 2017. 
Hmm. Are we back to Russian billionaire? Uh, yeah, I think that's <laughs> I think that's where we're at right now. Not to get too political. So maybe something f <laughs> by Ublo. Okay. Yeah. Something I'm, with not a lot of depth or substance, but a lot of flash and costs a lot of money. King Power Rose Gold Foudroyant. Let's do it. Okay. What does that Foudroyant do? Who knows? It's French, thus irrelevant. How do we spell it? Who knows? It's French, thus irrelevant. Ask Siri. I'm Tim. <laughs> He's Josh. This is Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. See ya.